The punches that work are the ones that land. Technique, proper technique, right? Punching technique, right? So to have a to proper punching technique, you understand the mechanics of a punch, right? So in general terms, is it better for a punch to be, is there more power potential in a long punch or a short punch? Long, right? Right? Okay. Where do punches start? All punches start where? In your feet, right? And so when you throw a punch, there's a thing called a kinetic chain, right? It's the chain of events right, that occur throughout your body in an attempt to produce as much power as efficiently and as fast as possible, right? So when you're throwing a punch, the more joints and the longer the chain, the more potential for power. So I'm gonna throw my right hand, which we call number two, which you'll learn in a minute, but I'll make an illustration for you and you'll be able to see what I'm talking about in terms of punch potential, power potential. So I'm standing like this and I'm gonna throw a two, all right? That's a two, right? Doesn't feel like there's a lot of power potential in there, does there? Doesn't feel like it, right? It's just, you can kind of see it's not gonna have a lot of wax on it, right? So now I'm gonna throw it and I want it to be a little, a little bit longer of a chain, right? Now I brought my hip and my shoulder into it a little bit, right? So that looks like that has a little more potential for power, right? And now I'm gonna throw a long punch, a real punch that has a lot of potential, right? Mm. Mm. Right? Now that punch starts here, doesn't start here. It ends here. That punch starts when I make, I, I ground my contact into the ground. I ground the ball of my foot into the ground and my ankle begins to rotate out, my knee begins to rotate in, which begins my hip to rotate around. We have this thing that we call the pole, and it's, it's a way for you to build image. I actually learned it uh, from my college baseball coach. It's about how your hips rotate around a pole, right? So imagine there's a pole that comes out of the sky, out of the ceiling, impales me, it spits me right down the middle, okay? Right out my right into the ground, right? So I'm impaled on this pole, right? We generate power by moving our hip around the pole. The faster we move our hip around the pole, right, in either direction, the more power we generate. What do we call that? Torque, right? We don't really generate power by moving towards our opponent, although that's some of it, but a small portion of it. We really generate power in our hips. This is where we store our energy for power for punching, right? The further and the faster your hip travels around the pole, the more potential for energy it has, right? So short punch, short, short potential, right? Not a lot, longer, quick, right? So I want you to think of this as a bow and arrow. We store our energy in our hips. If I gave you a bow and arrow, I gave you the sharpest arrow in the world and you put it in and you went like this. That's how far you pulled it back and you let it go. The arrow go whoop. That's the same as this, right? But if I took the arrow, the, the, the bow and I pulled it all the way back, right? We're storing up all of that energy in that bow. That's what we do to our hips. When our hips are back here, right? We've stored up all of that energy and we want to release those hips, boom. Right. And we want that hip to travel around that pole in a circle, torquing as fast as we possibly can. Boom, boom, right? When it's properly connected to the chain, through the ankle, through the knee, through the hip, to the shoulder, mm. right, boom, right? then you generate as much power as you possibly can as efficiently and fast as you can. The longer the chain, the more power potential. 
The shorter the chain, the lower the power potential. The longer the torque, the longer your hips travel around the pole, the more power. The shorter, the less power potential. Okay, you're gonna rotate your right hip as far forward as you can. I want you to fully extend that hip. Come on, rotate it, there you go. Fully, fully, fully with your chin down, chin down. Okay, now I want you to do it with your left side. You're gonna go like this. Okay, I want you to rotate that hip over like that. So what you're beginning to see, now watch my feet. My weight is flat on that foot. Weight in the ball of my foot, okay? I want everybody to stand up on your toes. Stand up on your toes, okay? There's no potential for power up there. You've lost all your leverage, right? To throw a big punch, you have to be connected to the floor. In fact, your, your weight has to sink into your feet. So when everybody stop and let the weight sink deeply into the ball of your feet. Just feel, you feel how grounded you are into the ground, right? How heavy your feet feel, okay? That's where your power potential starts. The further your feet are away from the ground, the less potential for power you have, right? Weight in the balls of your feet. This is why you hear this term all the time in fighting set down on your punches. This is what they mean. They want their weight in the feet. They want you to anchor yourself. There's no anchor up here, okay? So we want you to anchor yourself like this, and we want you to rotate your hips slowly while you're driving that back foot into the ground. Go ahead on your own. Try and get that feel. Go ahead. Go back to square and do it several times until you feel it. Look at my front foot, stop. Okay, when I do this, Keep that foot like that, okay? Keep that foot like that, okay? When I, we'll do the next one. When I go like this, keep that back foot. You keep the back foot or the lead, whatever foot's not involved in the twist, solid on the ground. Good. Throw your hip right at the opponent. Throw your hip right at him, like this, Randall. Boom! Explode, it should be explosive and quick. Okay, now we're gonna try this. We're gonna try the three like this. <clears throat> right? All it is is this. Right? Right? Quick! Quick! Go ahead and try that. Make sure your hip is with it. Make sure there's weight in that back foot. Boom! Ooh, that's nice. Good. Teach people how to throw the left hook. Okay? And you can experiment. We'll experiment with it later. All it is is if you're like this, you see my back foot up and my front foot down. Can you all see it? Right? All you're gonna do is drive your back foot down and lift your front foot up. This is it. <clears throat> <clears throat> can anybody see that? Right. Okay. That can come more natural to some people. Okay. A lot of people find that more natural. They just like that, right? You just foot's down, you boom, boom. Boom. You're just driving this foot down and picking this foot up. Boom. Boom. Okay. Everybody try that. Good. Good. Your body, your joints, in an effort to produce as much power as fast and as efficiently as possible. Right? Punches start in your feet. They ride into your ankle, into your knee, into your hip, into your shoulder. Right? When you get here, like this, you release all that energy into your hands. But your hands have only traveled this, your hands start right here, like this, okay? When you throw in the other one, from your feet, to your ankle, to your knee, to your hip, to your shoulder, right? Everybody see that? Okay? And we think of our punching like a bow and arrow, storing up energy, we want a nice, long, Rotation around the pole, nice torquing around the pole, right? Boom, boom, around the pole, right? We understand? Okay, get in your stance real quick. Okay. Now we're gonna learn how to throw some punches, all right? The first punch we're gonna learn how to throw is a jab, which is a one, right? There's a lot of punch count systems. We're a five punch system here, OK? 
Okay, I'll teach you the five punches. Some systems are six, some are eight, some are five, like ours, and then we call the punches. We name the punches after that, okay? But we're a five punch system, all right? And the first punch is the jab, second punch is the two, third punch is the three, four, five, okay? Those are the five basic punches. You can win a world championship on those five punches. And we want you to master them using what we just talked about. The concept of the pole, the concept of the kinetic chain, the concept of storing up energy in our hips, the importance of balance, okay? How do you know you've thrown a punch correctly, whatever it is? When you're on balance and ready to throw the next punch correctly, okay? So you might have thrown a dynamite right hand, but if you're off balance, it's not that great if you miss, right? A dynamite right hand is a dynamite right hand that you threw that would have knocked him out if you hit him, but you didn't, but you're ready to throw that hook right after it, and that's what catches him, right? Sequential, punches in sequence. When you're on, you finish that punch, you can flow right into the next punch. All about balance. All about proper distribution of weight. Now watch my hands, okay? Most people, when they throw a jab, not most people, a lot of people, when they throw a jab, I'm gonna show you a little trick. Go like that with your hand, okay? So, as soon as you see me move, right, I want you to move your hand out of the way. Go that way, okay? So, let's just practice it. Ready? Okay. Now, I'm going to go as fast as I can, all right? So, I'm going to throw two different jabs. I'm going to go as fast as I can. As soon as you see me move, move that hand out of the way, all right? How old are you? 24. All right, I'm 60. All right, you ready? As soon as you see me move, ready? Again, ready? One more time, ready? All right, now as soon as you see me move, move your hand out of the way. Okay, can anybody tell the difference between the first and the second one? When I was throwing my jab, I was just driving my elbow out simultaneously, right? And I said, as soon as you see me move, you move your hand. He, he wasn't looking at me, he was looking for movement, right? You have two eyes in the front of your head, right? They work together. What does that make you in the animal kingdom? A predator, right? So you, man, your eyes, you got lateral acuity. Your eyes are sensitive in certain ways, right? You can see the slightest bit of lateral movement, right? right? If you have eyes on the side of your head and they work independently, what's that make you? Prey. He's just using his instincts. He wasn't calculating my hands movement. He was just simply moving upon my movement, right? He was using his skill as a predator. Right, he was waiting in the weeds, right? He's like the lion waiting in the weeds. I begin to move my elbow out and he moved his hand, right? But on the second punch, which was much slower and much more effective, made him laugh about it, was because I just took my hand and I went like that. I just took my elbow and I kept it like that. There was no lateral movement and I went like that, right? The lesson in there, right, is the most effective punches are the ones that land, not the ones that look fancy, not the ones that are necessarily the quickest, right? Efficiency and timing beat speed, okay? So when you're throwing your punches, we want your elbows pointed down to the ground, okay? We want your punches pointed, your elbows pointed down the ground, and as a general form of technique, all we want you to do is take your hand and turn it over from here to here. What's gonna to happen to you is, you're gonna feel like you're gonna lose some of your power, right? You all wanna hit hard and you're gonna go, ah, that's not as hard as I can hit. Listen to this statement, technique precedes power. You do this 10,000 times, that jab's gonna have power, okay? You do this 10,000 times, you're gonna miss 9,000 of them. You understand? I don't give a shit how much power's in it. It's an inefficient punch. And it's, only, it, it's great when you're practicing, but all of a sudden you're getting there with somebody who's just going knocking your stuff down. You can't catch them, not because you're not faster than they are, because you're inefficient. Timing and efficiency beat speed. Technique precedes power. Elbow pointed down to the ground. You're just going to step up like this, put your foot right back in the same place, and you're going to drive that hand straight out like this, like there's a pipe right here and you're gonna punch right through that pipe, and the only way you're gonna do is just take your palm and turn it down and bring it straight back. Boom, boom, right, exactly right. Now you're gonna be restricted at first. 
You're going to be fighting yourself to do this, to, 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 to generate some power. Okay? To, technique precedes power. Okay? If you end up doing this wrong, you end up building a couple things. You end up doing two things that happens all the time. Fighters like to, ro they call the cycling their hands. They like, I don't have enough power to do that. I don't, <clears throat> there's just not enough power in that jab, right? So I'm gonna do this. That's no different than that. As soon as I see that thing roll, I'm way out of it, I'm gone. I'm gone, I'm, I'm someplace else, right? right? Or they distort themselves. You distort the technique. You know, when you're throwing your hook, right, and, and I go, roll it over like that, you know, there's no power in that. So what, what do you do? You try and make, right? You end up going, right? Technique precedes power. Be willing to give up a little power to develop the proper technique, because in the long run, the punches that work are the ones that land, the ones that are efficient, the ones that are technically correct. Boom, boom, boom. That's a lot better than when you're throwing a hard hook like that, or a sloppy jab like that, or a two or like that, right? You want your punches to be very short, okay? Very short and precise, straight, clean lines. It's tough to put the technique together because it's restrictive at first. This may feel perfectly natural to you guys, but it may not feel natural to you either. And if it doesn't feel natural, that's fine, right? I'm, I'm, I'm anticipating the fact it doesn't feel natural. Elbows to the ground, you'll hear me yell this from now until the day you're into your pro career, 